Hello, this is Mark McRoy. I'm here at the Electric Cave Recording Studio in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And I'm here to uh, talk about uh, pre-production. Uh, this is because a lot of it doesn't get done. Uh, a lot of the pre-production happens while you're recording. And so pre-production can be great in a few ways. It can be great to help you get a little perspective on your work. It can be great if you're going into a studio or even if you're working in your own studio. To take that time separately and get things ready makes the recording process easier. When you come into a studio, you don't have to change much. Um, or um, you don't have to uh, worry about the arrangement uh, while you're in the studio because you, you put in the work ahead of time. So, as a producer, so a lot of, a lot of artists produce themselves. Um, so as your own producer, or sitting down with a producer, or just being with someone who can help you with some objective opinions. It can be a musical collaborator who will kind of work in the role as, as a possible uh, producer in this pre-production process. What you should do, like when a band, for example, I'll say a band, comes into the studio and they have material, um, Often, if it's a band, they've been playing this material while they tour or play shows, and so they have some perspective on it. But sometimes these arrangements will grow just out of, just like a tree. They kind of just grow in whatever direction. And as the wind blows, it bends it or um, becomes a little windswept. And some songs can come in windswept a little bit from the road. And so you need uh, to listen to your material with fresh ears uh, before you decide to record it. Um, just getting into a situation. If you're working at home, just go into another room when you do pre-production. Don't uh, sit in the studio, or you know, have a meeting. Meetings are fun, right? Um, with uh, either musical collaborators or, like I said, a producer or just someone who you think is uh, you trust and can be helpful. So let's talk about the arrangement of the song, because that's a lot of what pre-production is about. Um, uh, most importantly, let's see. Is the song too long? That's a that's a question because often songs come in too long. Uh, these days, especially, um, the prog rock era is just about over. A seven-minute song um, has seen its day, I think, uh, as technology makes the human brain move faster and faster. Uh, people like songs that are short, again, um, succinct almost. Uh, so. Um, the big question to ask yourself is the length of the song correct? And I would say three minutes and something, or anywhere between two minutes and 20 seconds and up to four minutes is an acceptable length. But if you're more than four minutes, think about it. Should I cut something? Uh, if you're less than two and a half minutes or two, two minutes, 20 seconds, well, think about it. Is this a little too short? Um, but usually people err on the side of being too long. You know, three verses, choruses, I've got a bridge, I've got an intro, I've got the end, I've got a solo, and it's five minutes long. Um, so, does something need to get cut? Uh, so the, the first is your overall running length of the song. Um, kind of decide that in your arrangement, cutting and pasting. Maybe take out a, take out a verse and make it the chorus, or maybe make it the solo or take out the solo, throw it out, or shorten a part of the song. Um, when speaking of shortening a part of the song, number two, tip number two is, is your introduction too long? Guilty, guilty, guilty. I used to have introductions that were too long because I would usually use a, a verse length as the introduction. So you'd write a song and um, then you just kind of take the verse length and mix that the introduction and then go into a verse, and then go into another verse, and go into a chorus, and whatever. And if anyone has my first CD, they'll hear it all over the place. And um, I don't do that anymore. And it was a lesson learned. Um, it's more difficult to like a song that doesn't get to the point uh, early on. Uh, it's possible to like a song with a long introduction. Uh, and there's some classic songs that have crazy long introductions. Stairway to Heaven. Um, but uh, they have something interesting about them that makes the introduction work. But also, that, that's another point about the introduction. So, question, is your introduction too long? 
And if the answer is uh, no, then how can you, do you have hooks in your introduction? Is your introduction interesting? Is it going to, um, is it going to sustain the listener while they listen? Or if you have to have, uh, or what in your introduction is um, the thing that's going to make it interesting? Um, here's point number three for this little talk, is there's always something on top. Um, a rock song, and by, um, and also, you know, R&B song, disco song, rap song, um, they all have this in common. Everything has this in common. A voice, it's the human voice, or something else. A guitar solo taking over for the voice, or you know, any kind of instrument solo taking over for the voice. Uh, a melody line on a, on a keyboard or a horn. Um, there's always something on top, and if you make people go too long without that thing on the top, it seems a little out of balance or out of whack. So, uh, for example, um, um, in your introduction, maybe you need a melody, a counter melody to the verse, who knows what it is. But is there something there that's speaking to the listener? And then, of course, the human voice will come in if you're doing, or if you're doing an instrumental, it's going to be a, an instrument will come in and it will... Um, speak to the listener but that thing on the top that's uh, that's right up front and is going to engage with the listener uh, and as far back as Beethoven and as and way into the future I do believe this is this is a, this is necessary you need your melodies and they need to be carried by something and they need to be up front so are you doing that? Do you have the right ratio of, um, sometimes it's a riff, sometimes it's a, a hook. Now, speaking of hooks, let's talk about hooks. Um, in a contemporary song, whether it be rap, rock, R&B, uh, what a country, whatever, you need, I believe, you need at least three hooks. I'm sorry to say that, but it's just true. Um, so... People just uh, go for the hooks, catchy, catchy, catchy. That's what's getting people's attention. So do you have hooks? Do you have at least three hooks? Um, it used to be you get by with one hook, and then uh, two. But now you're not anybody until you got three hooks. So uh, just to recap, um, song running length, introduction length, the right number of uh, choruses, the right number of um, of uh, you know, a bridge or the instrumentals or whatever uh, to make it all a good length. Do you have something up front? Do you have a melody? Do you have the vocal up front? Do you have um, uh, do you have hooks? Do you have um, something easily recognizable, pleasing to listen to? And does it happen in strategic times? So there are some tips for pre-production. Um, hope that hope you found that helpful. I'm going to make some more videos, maybe I'll put some links somewhere around and um, you'll be able to, uh, to listen to some more um, stuff about, uh, about uh, recording and uh, music production. And I thank you for listening.